Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another RL Craft guide and tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about where to find structures and dungeons in your world map. And so stick around for that. And special feature, I do take constructive criticism from you guys. I really love hearing all the comments that you guys leave for me and every way I can improve. So here I'm going to feature this comment. It says, God, you talk so much shit just to get to the point instead of rambling on about crap. We came to the title and got bits and bobs of information every two to three minutes. So, in order to help that, I'm going to start rambling on and on and on about how, you know, my life is and how every little unimportant detail that I could possibly give you guys for every little uh, different piece of information. And we're going to cut it down, narrow it down, and uh, eventually summarize. And so that way I have a pre-made plan on how to go about this video. And I'm not going to talk about why I haven't been posting so much because of my liver and because I had uh, the shingles and I had a lot of medical issues and that's why I've been struggling to keep up with the post and pay no attention to the uh, power of being that I've been struggling in the background and appreciate all these stories that you're sharing. So we are going to divide this into different categories as well as a ranking system for how and where to find these things as well as what is the best dungeons and which ones give off the best loot. So we're going to start with land dungeons and then move on to the ocean dungeons and then nether dungeons and eventually make our way to the end dungeons. If that one in particular has no ranking order as far as which dungeons have the better loot but each one of those categories will have its ranking for better loot if that makes sense so let's get started with land dungeons i will also include timestamps for them in the video description so if you want to skip ahead to a specific dungeon you're looking for just uh, read the caption So we're going to start off with broken towers, towers, and these nether towers. So right behind me, I actually built my base around this nether tower. I just found it kind of amusing. This is like the first dungeon I beat in this game. Again, useless information, but there is my base and there is the dungeon that I built. So these towers and towers in general are the number one thing I like to farm for resources because at first, they're kind of hard to beat just because of the sheer amount of enemies and you're not going to be dealing that much damage to enemies. Um, but they offer sort of a unique thing that other dungeons don't in that you can go and do level by level and they have light included in them. So you don't have to worry about torches and you don't have to worry about completing all of the dungeon and worry about enemies coming from everywhere so this is one of the easier dungeons as far as like starting off goes and for more end game players the top layers of these dungeons are still worth it because they have a lot of diamond and a lot of other rare stuff that you can get now as far as where to find these dungeons luckily these are one of the most abundant dungeons there are um they're one of the easiest to find for sure and Oh, golden apple right off the bat. And uh, it's definitely one of the most recommended dungeons I could think of. Once you get accustomed to them, they're pretty easy to go about. Oh, uh, this is one of the broken dungeons that I was talking about. Uh, these are not so much worth it, the broken ones, uh, just because the spawners are kind of everywhere and they are definitely not beginner friendly. Let me change it. I got a dragon's eye and I do need it to use it for sure. Broken dungeons are not the easiest one to use. I know I said that these tower dungeons were easy to beat but uh, broken dungeons themselves are actually rather strenuous and hard because a they don't provide in a lot of loot that i would consider worth it and two there is a lot of parkour stuff you have to do but i mean if this is where you find um if you don't if you don't want to go to the the nether this is where you find a lot of those, uh, what are these things called? The hot rods or whatever? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not their name, but we're just gonna go with that. Um, that's where you find these if you don't wanna go, oh, the blaze, yes, thank you. Yeah, that's where you find these in the overworld. So, this is a good place to get blaze rods, but if you're, uh, if you're a beginner player, I don't recommend it. You don't really need blaze rods starting off the game, but if you want to, then by all means, that's, you do you. 
Um, I, I even at end game, I don't find these worth it just because it, it, they're the loot. The loot's not there. All right, so second unique uh, building is going to be these jungle serpent castles or dungeons, I guess. It's more of a labyrinth, uh, but it's pretty straightforward labyrinth. You don't even have to go through it completely. There's not really much to these dungeons. As far as loot, it's very underwhelming. Uh, you could actually, if you if you want to just skip through the entire dungeon, like it, it's a cool dungeon to go through. Don't get me wrong. It, it's just a giant labyrinth. And if you take pleasure in finding your way through labyrinths, then by all means do this. Uh, but as far as the loot goes, it's underwhelming. Like this is half the loot. I already looted this place, so there's I can't really show you much. But it's a, it's a cool building in general. If you want to build your base around this or in this, it, it would not be a bad place to do so. Uh, I just think it's a really cool looking tower. Uh, whoever designed this did a really great job. Uh, but these are only found in these jungle biomes. So uh, just definitely keep an eye out for them because they are they're pretty unique looking and they're one of my favorite looking dungeons for sure. They're just one of my least favorite to do. Okay, next up is these jungle dungeons. It is technically not a dungeon, but it is a port according to the creators anyways. There, there's nothing in here other than the fact that it looks super cool. It's a little bit oddly placed. It, I mean, it matches the jungle theme, but there's, there's nothing really in here. It's just a bunch of monsters just waiting to attack you. Um, no loot or anything, just giant black dark space. Uh, where mobs to spawn and that is that okay so next on the list is going to be these pyramids these are all all these dungeons are found in the jungle as you might have guessed and uh this isn't part of the pyramid this just this is hap this just happens to be a dungeon that is connected to the pyramid which kind of puts an ugly strain on the eye so let's just focus on the other side of the pyramid i personally haven't done the actual pyramid um starts up here and it looks like it's just a normal dungeon that goes all the way down there. I wouldn't be able to tell you the level of difficulty that this one is simply because, again, I haven't done it, but it looks like it's one of those labyrinths. Labyrinths aren't, for me personally, they're not particularly worth it. And labyrinths, so labyrinths in general tend to have about a medium loot count, medium loot reward. I wouldn't say they're particularly worth it, worth it. They're okay. I wouldn't go out of my way to find labyrinths, but see, like, right now I just I just found 31 iron ingots and then just some books. And that's typically what you'll find. And you'll, you'll find your typical, like, spawners and stuff. Um, but that's, that's the extent of that. Okay, so here's the fair, uh, another one that's fairly easy to manage. Um, this one would be a cabin in the woods. It's not my favorite dungeon or anything. It's it's simple, it's straightforward, and it's just a house. Um, but oh, I guess I entered through the back. But um, it's it's fairly challenging in in the sense that there will be a lot of monsters. Uh, but um, it's not the hardest thing to do. It's if I'm not mistaken, it's just zombies and Ender, um, not Ender, um, Wither Schools, and the nice thing about this is that the weather schools can't actually get to you okay so the weather schools are up here and the reason this is nice is because you can farm them because whoever made this dungeon didn't think about the fact that these guys are too big so you can sit here and farm these guys all day and this is the best way to get wither uh wither bones and you just kind of let the farm spawners do their thing and like i said there's not a whole bunch of monsters there is two spawn boxes for zombies and then the, the three wither boxes for the wither and that's it but um uh, they this house in particular well not this house in particular but this house or this cabin i guess um usually has some nice rewards here <laughs> in this part of the house supposedly um so it's got the enchantment table and sometimes it'll have like really nice stacks of stuff in there uh in this case it doesn't and then you have the rooms yeah sometimes you'll find arrows sometimes you'll find torches just and then don't forget behind the doorway here. Oh, see, there's some torches. Um, but that's it. it. It's a pretty standard, pretty easy to do dungeon. Do I recommend it? I don't know. I mean, you can do it on your own time. 
It's not bad. It's not the worst dungeon. It, once you get past the zombies downstairs, it's pretty easy. It's a pretty easy way to get, like, experience. Um, for me, I don't personally really care for the wither. So I'm just gonna break him and get that experience. So another place that's uh, minimal effort and you don't really have to battle anything. It is just a villager place. It's gonna be these desert biomes, I guess you could call them. There's not really much to them. You don't really gain much, uh, but they have these really cute treasure chests like decorations that um, are pretty fun to just loot. <laughs> um, they do have stuff in them. So if you wanna, if you wanna save that first, then you, by all means, but I think, I think if these decorations are just precious, um, it's more or less a great place for collecting food, um, but again, there's not really much to them. If you want to go out here and then just kind of see what they have, you can do that, but there's not much to them. Now right nearby is this pretty little dungeon. Um, if you don't know what this is, this is, um, it's sort of like a Greek a Colosseum monument thing, temple, whatever you want to call it. It might look very bland, plain, whatever. And it is. Like, the structure itself is nothing amazing. The only thing this thing has is Medusa. And let me tell you, for the amount of work you have to do to kill her and not die, I, I don't know. It's not worth it to me. If you want to go through the pain and sacrifice yourself, by all means, you can do that. But, um, I'm not gonna go fight it. <laughs> I'm not ready for it. What I like to do is I like to break through these. And then I like to trap her in with all the, uh, sandboxes. Um, so I'll break, yep, like that, just like that. I'll break, uh, I'll break the bottom floor. And, uh, that's how I'll do it. But yeah, Medusa's down here. So if you ever want to fight her, there's nothing else other than that. Um, so have fun. And then we have the, these desert pyramids. Um, so all of these are found in the desert, if you haven't guessed already. <laughs> and this is all desert biomes. Um, this one too, it's not like the biggest thing worth fighting for. Um, this is just, this is just gonna take you down and there'll be a huge dungeon underneath and, and that's that. But that's all there is to that. It's okay, it's just like any other underground dungeon, there's nothing special about it other than it's a cool structure outside. So for me personally, the easiest dungeons to complete are actually these little huts. I know that they don't look like much, and they're not. They are literally just tiny little sh shacks. And all it is, is just two spawners. One, two. <laughs> and there's a treasure chest. And this is literally the easiest dungeon there is in the whole game. And that's it. That's all, that's all there is to it. So next up is these desert fortresses. Um, these are, for me personally, very rare. This is the only one I have found in the entire game. Oop, uh, it is found in a desert biome, but it is super rare, I think. At least for me it is, because I have yet to see another one just like it. Maybe you guys have better chances of finding one. But it's a very simple dungeon. Um, I will say though, just be very, very, very cautious because there are traps in this entire place. And if you're dungeons like me, there's a lot of spider webs, but just keep an eye open. Uh, there are four treasure chests, uh, one in every uh, fort or tower, whatever you want to call it. Most of them are booby trapped. And then there's the main dungeon here, which is also booby trapped. Actually, you know what? I have been through here. I didn't even know there was a spawner up here. Once you're inside, there are four entrances downstairs. Whichever one you take uh, will be totally up to you. Uh, just know that it is gonna be a pain. Have spawners, big room. Okay, yeah, some of these have spawners and, and then, like I said, there's traps. So like this one will just lead you down there. This looks like it has a slime, but I wouldn't trust falling down there. I have tried digging this out. Apparently there, there was some sort of trap here. I'm not sure what that's about. Yep, okay, there you go. There, this is, yep, yeah, okay. So just just follow the, uh, the sign that says big room. Be very ready to have confrontation with monsters. Because apparently, so this, this room is yay dark. Okay, I, I can see everything because I have a dragon's eye, but bring torches, okay? I don't want you falling in here and then dying immediately. This would be one of the worst places to lose all your stuff. Um, but there is 
a lot of loot. I have personally haven't gotten lucky with this dungeon, uh, but who knows. So, you see those traps? There's traps there, and there's traps there, and there's this this thing in the middle, which probably tells me that there are bombs literally everywhere. And the first thing you should do with anything, with any of these, is always make sure there's no traps. <laughs> so, that looks suspicious. I want to look at what's in here. Looks like there's no traps there. That's just for decoration. Uh, but there is... Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it lighting up? Oh, God. It went off anyways. I don't understand. I don't understand what just happened. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. If there was some sort of chain reaction that needed to be, you know, turned off, then I definitely needed to break all those things. But that, that made no sense. I don't understand why that went off. Anyways, that's this dungeon. So this next one's actually quite interesting for all you mining lovers out there. I found this right underneath my base. My base is like right there. Um, and I found this rift, right? This is this is in the important part. This is the prequel to what's coming. I found this rift and then I found this wall that seemed kind of off-putting to me. And I was like, why, why is there dirt growing on the wall? And so I dug through it and I found the most bizarre thing. The most bizarre thing. It's a whole village out here. It's growing random stuff. It is a dungeon, more or less. It's, it's a village, but it's a dungeon as well. Because there's spawners. And there's treasure boxes with like beds and stuff where villagers used to live. Um, but in, oh my god. <laughs> but in this particular dungeon, there is no, uh, there's no villagers. Not for me anyways. Um, if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I have Magma Walker on my boots. boots. So yeah, I, I would not come down here if I did not have Magma Walker, because there's lava everywhere. Um, so this is this is the lava dungeon um, in the overworld. Good. I know that that sounds it wouldn't be it, it wouldn't make sense if it was uh, in the Nether because everything is lava. This is just kind of like a dwarf mine. It, it's really cool. If you want to build your base around this and just light up the whole place, you most definitely can. But there's nothing. There's there's nothing of value for me, at least. There's nothing spawned. You can mine like the uh, like the resources around the, the the shaft, the mine shafts. But for me personally, I don't know. It, it it's not worth going through the trouble. It, it's really cool to explore and go through because there's like these really intrinsic stuff built in but it's not for me. These dungeons are only found underground. So if you enjoy mining and you want to search for them, by all means. There's no particular place underground that these are located. You just kind of have to, I guess, get lucky with it. Here's one I've never seen before. Uh, a mushroom dungeon? I know nothing about it other than I found it on the side of the mountain. I don't know if there's any rewards or what's in here. Oh, ooh. Yeah, okay. Apparently this is a thing. It's just just a bunch of druggies getting together and going, yeah, we should make a base with giant mushrooms. So there is one other overworld dungeon that I actually kind of forgot about. And it's these type of, it's it's these dungeons. Um, there There's three different of these dungeons as far as I've seen. Some of these are underground. Some of these are in the water. And this one in particular seems to be underground. And then there's one in the desert. Wow, oh, what an entrance. These dungeons are, yes, they're hard. I'd say the loot varies. Do I think they're particularly worth it? Um, I don't know. That's up to you. I, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, as you can see, it's um, not for the pink of heart. Uh, and I, if you had been wearing normal armor, you would have, you would have definitely been goner by now. Look at that, I just hit 183 on that. And and it's still alive. Oh my god, okay. 
really I'm just getting thrown around. I'm not really taking that much damage. I'm just getting thrown around like I'm some sort of baseball bat. Baseball. These don't get harder as they go down. These just are hard at every level. I have made a video about these dungeons before too. This one in particular doesn't seem to have the dragons, or not that I can see anyways. Uh, I see a princess and I see a malevolent observer, which I'm assuming that's a malevolent observer right there. So these dungeons do have boss, uh, which are really cool. If you want something that is more like dungeon-like, that has uh, dun uh, bosses with like, these these are different, it, definitely it. Looks like this is a, a jungle, jungle base. Um, so this this type of brick is its own skin um, and there's one designed for the for the desert there's one designed for the water there's one designed for the jungle apparently and i i found the one that's in front of my base is actually purple um, but it's the same type of brick and i'm not sure where to find that one i just kind of ran across it but i would say that these dungeons are lower than the cabin dungeons only because you can take these one room at a time and so you don't have to feel overwhelmed um, i just kind of jumped in here and because because of my armor i'm pretty confident uh, that i'm not going to die in most situations so the cool thing about the bosses is that they will drop uh, summoning orbs and you can summon different minions yep there's one um, so here we go avian soul oh oh well that kind of sucks doesn't it then there's these towers. Um, I have seen them in the jungle mostly, uh, but th there's nothing really special about them. Uh, it's a tower. Sometimes they have loot. Um, this very last level has a diamond block that you can mine, and that is that. Um, it's a cool looking tower for sure, and it's got lots and lots and lots of levels, and it's got this weird plant thing here. I I've seen it filled with like seeds and plants and stuff, but I guess this one doesn't have any of that. And it has a lot of redstone, a lot of redstone lamps. Other than that, there's not really much to it. Uh, hopefully I can make So next on the dungeon list is going to be these cabins. So these cabin dungeons, or as I like to call them, the Hansel and Gretel dungeons, they, they just kind of remind me of the Hansel and Gretel. They just have this feel, like there's even cake and an oven turned on. Anyways, so this dungeon is gonna be mid-tier to end game kind of dungeon. It has some of the best loot you'll ever find in dungeons, but it's also one of the most, it's one of the longest dungeons and it's one of the hardest dungeons out there as far as the overworld goes, not including the, bio the water biomes. It's a perfect dungeon for every le level of player, right? These first two levels are great for beginners. The third and fourth are great for mid players and the last like two levels are or actually just the last level is great for end game players and that is because obviously the further down you go the harder it gets and the more resources and the higher chance that you have of dying but at the same time the better the reward gets so it just it, it really depends on your gear you could do it very slowly and it's going to take you hours to complete or you can just wait until your end game and it'll it should still take you about 30 minutes to complete but this is one of my favorite dungeons to do not because of the length or anything but it's just because it has some of the better loot uh, i just go straight to the bottom at this point and i just dig straight down and then get to the last level and so these cabin cabin dungeons they're usually found right next to an ocean so I, I, I have seen them in islands and that's usually to so the next dungeon we're going to talk about. We're not, I'm not going to show just because I, I don't remember where I found it and it's the Murex and, and it, they, <laughs> these dungeons are, I guess, fun to do the first time you find them, but they're not really worth it. Like it's cool to have like these cool little niche parts, right? Like you'll get like the, the Murex, Murex weapons and stuff and it's, it's okay, but like 12 attack for a longsword 
Like, a diamond regular sword has 16 attack. Like, it's just, it, it's not worth it, you know? Like, Murex, it, it, the Miramex dungeons are kind of hard to do and they're a pain. Yeah, you can, you can pretty much just bow and arrow the whole thing, but it, you will, you will have a bad time. You will definitely have a bad time. I, I wouldn't recommend it, personally. So personally, the cabin dungeon is the second dun hardest dungeon to do in the overworld uh, as far as land goes. But the absolute hardest one to do is these castle, these forest castles. And they are, if you saw my last video, you will understand why, but these are absolutely massive. There is an underground and it's not that hard, but actually getting through the towers is an absolute nightmare. Um, I would definitely consider these to be mid to end game dungeons uh, just because you you will die at least once as a mid game player. As an end game player you might be okay. Um, but just know th these dungeons put up a fight. Like sure you can you can do something cheap like if, if you find an elytra you can fly to the very top of the tower and just collect your loot right like you don't even have to fight it if you do it this way but like if you want to go through the whole dungeon yeah just just believe me that it's it is a trip just watch my last video and you'll understand why these i have only found in the middle of a forest and both times it was in the middle of these type of forest um uh, both dark wood and snowy areas um other than that that i don't believe there's any specific locations for these but these have one of the best rewards if we were to put the cabin dungeon next to this dungeon i think the cabin dungeon has better rewards um but only because there's more of it in the cabin dungeon whereas this there's less of it but you there's potential for there'd be really rare rewards in this uh definitely worth checking out next up is these water rafts that are in the middle of the ocean um for some reason this one's cut in half but usually there's more loot to it um looks like two overlapping buildings kind of came together and one destroyed the other but um this one has decent loot uh, whenever you find the beds and stuff it, it's just able, being able to find these they're kind of random sorted throughout the ocean usually in the far middle of the ocean um you don't really find them near land typically these make okay loot um if you're able to find them um i should note that i don't recommend going for any of the ocean any of the ocean buildings or dungeons just because it's way easier to get killed out in the ocean like some monsters will drag you to the very bottom and some monsters will paralyze you and some monsters will just drag you everywhere and so unless you have underwater breathing and some decent armor i don't recommend doing any of the oceans like even these drafts if you manage to get a boat um you these monsters are still able to destroy that boat so um be cautious whenever you go into the ocean, even if it's something uh, near shallow water. Brings us to the next point. Um, after these rafts are going to be these boats. And the reason these are further down the list because yes, you can find some rare treasure in here. Not common, but it is It's kind of random because this is uh, it's supposed to be a sunken ship with treasure in it. But some of these ships don't exactly have quote-unquote treasure not every ship was meant to uh hold a million gold so you got to be cautious with which ones you're looting and again in order to get this far down you better make sure you have underwater breathing and some sort of eyesight uh to see underwater and honestly unless you are able to freely go through the ocean like i am i don't think these are worth looting or going out of your way to loot if you have to struggle to get to them with that said though there is one thing underwater that is worth looting and it's the underwater libraries so these are pretty nice harmless libraries that have no monsters whatsoever and they're full of treasures and by treasures i mean enchantments there's not really anything resource related in here um, i guess if you want to farm if you want to farm all of the glowstone you can but i i don't know i just leave these libraries intact the only thing i loot ever is the treasure in here and 
I know I'm showing you like empty, empty treasure chest, but that's because I already looted this place. They have definitely some of the best treasure. You have uh, ruins here, you have high level enchantments, and it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. It's just uh, it's very specific to just enchantments. So if you're looking for enchantments, this is probably the best place to find them. And these are again scattered all over the water. You just gotta find them just randomly. So next up is gonna be these. This one personally for me is not worth it whatsoever. Not one bit, but it's an underwater church. And uh, I mean, you can go in here and if you wanna make a base in here, you can. This is all pre-built and for some reason, someone decided to drown out the church. But uh, there's no treasure in here. It's simply just for looks. The only reason there's all this water coming in is because I made holes in there. But I will warn you that it is filled with monsters at first. So the only reason there's some light in here is because I put some light in here. But other than that, it's just filled with monsters and no treasure. So yep, there's this is just for decoration mostly. I'd say that the first doff and the easiest one to find would be these castles in the middle of the water. Uh, they're not the most profitable, at least not these ones. It's brother which sits up in the sky is, but this one only has two chests and it usually has just some pretty beginner loot. So this is this is good to find if this is like the first thing you find as a player um, because it has some good starting, starting off uh, loot. There's also bookcases if you want to loot them here. I already did and that's why you didn't see any upstairs, but this is there's no monsters, there's no mobs in this, or at least there shouldn't be. Um, if you want to go digging in the walls, you can. And I think you'll find spawners in some of these, but not all of them. And um, yeah, the loot's pretty low, but it's also super easy to do, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, very good for beginners. Okay, so next up, this is, I don't know, should I call this <laughs> a water temple? It's a villager temple, for sure, um, and it's only found in water, or in the middle of the ocean, I should say, and it goes up really high, I mean, really high. And there is a treasure up here if you're willing to climb the tower and for some reason you don't have a fear of heights in Minecraft. It is a peaceful dungeon. There's the only thing up here is, well, they're not up here right now, but it's the, uh, the wind monsters. And these are also somewhat rare, at least in my biomes. And um, you can farm this tower for resources, uh, like the very top tower is filled with iron and stuff. And you, yeah, there's a library, there's some potions sometimes. I don't know, there's a night potion, but potions, like library, the enchantment table, the furnaces. There are treasures in here, and so you can farm that. And there's a toilet. These are rare, more rare to find, but luckily they're just easier to farm. Um, but there's not much to them. You can find uh, random treasures in there. All right, next up is these classic guardian temples. Now, me personally, I don't really care about these temples. All right, these are these are antique. They are overrated, and quite frankly, there is nothing really good about them. Like, if you're farming them for the brick and the lanterns, then by all means. But nothing in, in RL Craft, nothing about them is special. And yeah, the only reason I go in here, it's literally just to farm them like this. Now with that said, there is an underwater temple that is worth farming. And that is, well, I don't even know what to call this. It, it is sort of a maze, uh, but it is an open dungeon. And it is just absolutely filled, filled with both treasures and monsters. So this is one of those super end game uh, dungeons that I do not advise any people to start off with um, at least at least mid game but you you definitely need some good gear and you need to be able to see underwater one way or another you can you can do it without a dragon side by just putting a bunch of lanterns or glowstones in here but I do not recommend coming in here without being able to see because right now you guys can see everything just fine but that's because I have my dragon's eye. Without my dragon's eye. Yeah, this is this is what it would look like. <laughs> this is not a fun place to be. So um, definitely do that. And these uh, these guardians have penetrating uh, damage, so I don't recommend it. You can find some really end game loot in here, but again, 
if you're willing to put in the effort and they just kind of go through everything, you are more than welcome to do it. Um, this is this is one of my favorite dungeons to farm because I always, always, always find something worth uh, farming here for. I usually, so the best method that I have found for clearing these dungeons, um, at least these specific ones, is breaking down every single chest box because there's so many of them and everything, every corner looks about the same. So in order to not get confused, I would just start breaking down the treasure box as you go through. Also, uh, having shulker boxes and having backpacks is probably the best way to go through this without having to make several trips. If you need to make several trips, by all means do that. But that is that is the slowest way to do it. The fastest way to do it uh, in probably, I don't know, 20, 20 minutes. Usually takes me about 15, 20 minutes to complete one of these dungeons um, with the gear that I have. Um, and that's without making any secondary trips. I just kind of do it all in one trip. Best thing about these dungeons is that you can find shulker boxes in these treasures. So that is how I got my uh, shulker boxes without going to the end, um, is simply by farming these dungeons. And I didn't know that until I got here. So the reason I'm still farming these dungeons is because I am looking for a bubble item that increases my speed because I lost my last one. I'm looking for this specifically, Stone of Greater Inertia. Um, I had one and then I lost it because I died and I couldn't recover it, I couldn't find it. And so I'm a little salty, but that is, that's why I farm these dungeons, just in case I can find one again. Okay, so last for the water dungeon is something I kind of hinted at earlier, and it's these giant prison castles. These things are absolute nightmares, and even at a mid to end game place where I am, these things are horrid. I do not, I do, I, I almost never go through these and uh, actually finish them. As you can see, these, these things are still intact. But I, I don't go in here unless I'm looking to get a hell of a lot of experience and am ready to die. Because these towers are an absolute nightmare. The best way to finish these towers is get yourself a diamond pickaxe, a bunch of torches, and go down the side of the castle and then just mine through the last level and then collect all the rewards. You might want to get the very last uh, tower first because that's where all the uh, nixes are and they'll, they're pretty annoying to deal with. But yeah, the, these towers are an absolute nightmare. There is a lot, and I mean a lot of loot. A lot of good loot too, like end game loot. But, oh. But unless you're willing to put up with the, oh my god, see, this is, this is what I'm talking about. That you will get spammed, oh, and you will get trapped. <laughs> you will get spammed from all places because every single level has holes in them. So every, all the monsters from like two levels above are just falling on you. So just be prepared for that. I really don't want to do this, but I guess it's for the video. Nether? Okay. Hell hole. Absolute nightmare. Oh my god, this fly never coming here. Okay, nether dungeons. There's this tower. And am I being held back by? exactly why I don't come in here. I'm a mid to end game player and I still take this much damage. It is ridiculous. Okay, so there's these towers that look just like the normal thing. And then there's those dungeons over there. Okay, cool. I don't know that there's anything else in here. So if you want to know what's in the nether, uh, by all means, go explore it yourself. But I, this is not, this is not happening. I'm not doing this. There's a reason I have Magma Walker. The only reason you should be in here is if you have nearly 100% projectile damage and an explosive blast damage. Oh my god. Oh yeah, and these water bags. This is the only way you can drink water in, in this hellhole. 
Okay. Magma Walker. Water bags. Those dead schools. Uh, those tower dungeons and those other tower dungeons that I just showed you are the only things in here, okay? Do you actually want to know what else is in here? Go do it. your own research because I, I, I'm not coming back here. I, I don't care. There is nothing that I need in here to complete the end game. So now here we are in the end, the last battle, wondering what kind of dungeons are in the end. Well, you're just gonna have to get to it for yourself to find out. Alright guys, that is gonna be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment if you think I missed anything or if I did miss anything. I'm pretty sure I did because there's a lot I didn't cover. But if you find this useful, please share and subscribe if you want more content like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next time. Bye.